Hi guys, this is homework help for the current powered Ohm's Law practice problem, aka the lightning bolt worksheet. You're probably going to want to do this one after you have gone through the notes over uh, current voltage resistance and intro and electric power. Um, the three equations you're going to need for this one are current equals charge over time current equals voltage over resistance, otherwise known as Ohm's Law, and power equals current times voltage. For most people, the hardest part of these equations is just remembering what stands for what. So you might want to make yourself flashcards or come up with some way to practice. Uh, remember that I is current and we measure it in amps, which is a capital A, Q is charge, we measure it in coulombs, which is capital C. A T, of course, is time in seconds. Um, I is always current, so still measured in amps here. V is voltage, measured in volts. R is resistance, measured in ohms, and we use a Greek letter called omega to represent ohms. Pa P stands for power, we measure that in watts. I, of course, is current in amps, and V is voltage in volts. So use those uh, units to help you figure out what you're supposed to do when you're solving. So if we take a look at number one, calculate the current where 10 coulombs of charge pass a point in five seconds. Well, 10 coulombs is this one, right? That's Q. Um, it also gives you five seconds. Our only equation with seconds is this one. So we have T equals five seconds. We're looking for current, which is capital I, so we're going to choose to use I equals Q over T to solve for this one. If you skip down to number three, we have uh, some different units. So ask us to calculate the current. Okay, so I is going to be our question. It asks, uh, or it gives us a 14 ohms here. That's a resistance. We always measure resistance with that Greek symbol. And then we have a voltage of 120 volts. So with these three givens, the equation that would make the most sense to use is Ohm's Law, which is I equals V over R. The last one I want to look at is number nine. We have a 1050 watt electric toaster operating on a household circuit of 120 volts. So 100 our 1050 watt is power. And then 120 volts is voltage, of course. The question is, what is the resistance? So R is our question mark. So take a look at our equations. I've rewritten them here on the side. And notice that we don't have an equation with those three. However, we could combine what we do have to write a new equation. If you've looked at the flower petal worksheet, uh, this is what you did on that worksheet. If not, it would probably be really, really helpful to look at that. Okay, so if we start with P equals I times V, and we know that we have P and we have V, and we're trying to solve for R, then we want to get rid of this I. So let's think about what I is equal to. I is V over R, right? So let's sub V over R in for I. So now we have P equals V over R times V. Okay, so um, the V by itself is as if it was like V over one. So we can rewrite this to say P equals V squared over R, and now we can solve for resistance. If that's confusing to you, then you can go about it a different way. You can solve for um, I first, so you're going to use the P equals I times V formula and solve for I, and then you're going to use the I equals V over four R formula to solve for R. So it can be a two-step or you can write yourself a new equation. Either way should work. Okay, I lied when I said number nine was the last one. Let's actually take a look at number 10 as well because it can be a little confusing. So we find out that the Garcias keep a pretty low wattage front light 
on on their porch all night long. They tell you from 6 p.m. to 7 a.m. So that gives us a time, right? We've got a time frame of 13 hours per night or per day. And um, they give us a cost per kilowatt hour. Okay, so we have 0.08 per kilowatt hour. And then it uh, says that they're going to run the light for a week. So we know that we can take this time frame and multiply by seven days to get the actual hours. Um, and we're looking for total cost. And then the last given that I forgot to write down was the power of their porch is 40 watts. Um, this is pretty unusual, but notice that uh, the uh, cost here is for kilowatt hours. So when your uh, house, your actual house, uses power, it's using power all day long, every day, right? There's some things that never turn off like your refrigerator. So when your parents uh, or your guardians, whoever you live with, gets an energy bill, they're billed for kilowatt hours because there's so much power being used by a house. They don't want to do it by watt hours. They want to do by kilowatt hours. So we're actually going to go ahead and convert 40 watts into kilowatts. Um, so let's go for our old standard way of conversion. In one kilowatt, I have 1,000 watts. I'm setting it up this way because I want to get rid of watts. I want kilowatts. Kilo anything is 1,000. Um, so 40 divided by 1,000 is going to be 0.040 kilowatt. Now that's, again, kind of atypical. We don't normally get out of the base unit, but for energy problems, you're generally going to want to have them in kilowatts. Okay, so we now have a lot of information. How are we going to figure out how much it costs to run the light for this amount of time each week? If you think about it like you're going to go buy some oranges at the store, you have a certain amount of oranges, they each cost 10 cents, how are you going to figure out the total cost? You're going to multiply them, right? You're going to take your number of oranges times 10 cents, and that gives you your total. You're going to think of the kilowatt hours um, as the, the oranges in this case. So in order to figure that out, you're going to need to do this amount of hours that you figured out here, 13 hours times 7 days, and you're going to multiply that by the kilowatts and that will give you some amount of kilowatt hours. And then your final step is to take this number and multiply it by the cost, which was 0 0.08. And that's going to give you your final. So you're going to take your kilowatt hours times the 0 0.08, and that will be your final cost. I hope that makes sense. As always, reach out if not.